the biggest of the assets is uh, the clusters of induction. I think that's, you know, we describe it as transformed and it will be transformed. And I think the output for the learners will just be out of sight. I mean, we, you know, every time we talk to someone about induction consistently, you know, the people leaders are bemoaning it or the staff are going, oh my God, you know, the new staff. So we know, my boss says to me, any change would be an improvement because it's pretty bad, but this is going to be, it, you know, uh, you know, night and day kind of change. I've said this a number of times that, you know, even because we're using a, a, a more traditional approach to learning and we do this sort of single design, you know, single piece of learning or learning asset is the outcome. Even if all the people did was one part of the, you know, even if all they did was the upgrade action on an existing piece of learning, they're going to get better outcomes. You know, even if all they did was look into, dig into the people they're going to design the learning for, then, you know, even if they only end up with a single piece of learning, it's going to be so much better as a result of really digging into those personas. And so I've, I've always kind of had this thought in my head that, there, you know, if nothing else, there's benefits in doing part of the model. Because what we would have had without using the LCD approach would have been better because realistically in induction, anything would have been better than we had. So but it just will be so much better because like Viv said, you know, it's going to take account of so much more diversity of learner styles. It's much more engaging, you know, that the whole, even the approach that we've taken with kind of, you know, digging in and using the LCD approach to what learners need has informed how it's going to be delivered. So that will look, the look and feel of it has been influenced by what people have told us and things like, you know, the learn interviews and the change interviews. So um, there is a reasonable expectation from our developers um, that the learning that we're creating with them will probably win awards. And I think that that will be in part due to the approach that we've taken in getting to the development of the asset. So it's it's been a really integral driver in helping us to select the right uh, learning assets out of the surround action because it's really easy to fall into that new learner trap yeah but what what and the key thing all along with induction was and this is common for them but this was definitely the case for us once you'd done it you'd done it and you couldn't go back to it you almost couldn't and the system was really complicated to get, actually get re-access to the content but the point is that, you know, if you learn about, I don't know, information security on day three, and then you have a problem or an issue or something you need that information for at day 30 or day 60 or three years later, there wasn't anything that helped you. So that was really, I think that's been really interesting for me. I mean, I've heard the model before, but I think really the cluster approach really kind of pushes you to consider it from that perspective to really actually make sure that the learning that you choose <clears throat> isn't just going to be about now, but actually about all of those subsequent moments. I find myself talking about that a lot. And I think if that was, you know, the only thing that definitely won't be, but if it was the only thing that other parts of the business got from using the learning, the LCD approach, that would be such a benefit for us as an organization, because I think we just inherently people design learning for the new learner and then just wonder why people you know, aren't magically informed as a result of having those fish is not very good learning, which we've had and still got. <laughs> so yeah, I think the the whole move towards, you know, that and behavior change and consistent, sustained behavior change, I think they're just kind of really interlocked. One of the things that I think is really interesting, Crystal, is how um, much the language of the LCD model is now in the language of IID. Oh. Even not just not even us, but you know, people who have you know bumped up against us in this process now talk about learning assets and you know learner personas and not in, not in necessarily a hugely informed way, but I don't mind that. But they kind of have enough of a sense of these kinds of things, and it's interesting how that. It's becoming, especially learning assets, that don't you think, guys? That's a term that people just use right across the organization now. And it's become much more well known. One of the things I'm still trying to break is they go, your LCD model. I'm like, actually, it's not mine. I didn't think it up. I'd love to have thought it up, but I didn't. It's actually a published model. Look, there's a book. There's a whole load of how people use it all over the world. So I'm still kind of working on them recognizing that actually, you know, it is a thing. We do actually want the data because we want to be able to mine it for other things. And it's one of the things that's come up with the leadership cluster stuff, actually, especially with the learn personas. 
but even actually in the change action interviews was just how rich that data source is for a whole load of other things. You know, we're working in my in my LD, LD, OD team, we're working broadly across leadership. So there's lots of different ways that we could be using that. So I think that was also, you know, it's a nice benefit to the business. Although I'm I'm really confident in my experience with the model and certainly happy, you know, to go and run more and give advice to our organization on it, which is, you know, what we're starting to do now. There are some things where I'm like, I wanted to do more of it, you know, <laughs> it's my learning geek hat. I was like, I want to actually be in those interviews. What well, we've gone in really big, you know, with these big enterprise wide learning initiatives, but actually I already have kind of a runway of people who are going, I want to do a little bit of work on change action. I've got some learning. I'd like to create knowledge management. You know, we've got the sort of little, small, much smaller scale pieces of learning. So I think that'll be kind of, you know, that we'd be keen to, to get some ideas from you on how do we go from, you know, clusters that are six months and just in the process of developing the cluster. I mean, it's about an 18 month piece of work all together to do all three of them at once down to, you know, just a single kind of quite simple problem, if you like, in comparison. We've been really lucky. We've been really privileged to be able to be involved in the work. I'm sure I know that we'll all three of us be able to go on and do other things for using this approach and be the better for it. And like I said, we already talked to people about it a lot and there's a huge amount of kind of interest in our sector on it. So that's a good thing, a great thing. I bless the day I came across it. Honestly, I really do. I mean, and and it's funny because when I talk about it, people can tell how enthusiastic I am. I'm like, oh, wow, that sounds really cool. And I go, let me get this and at least hear it. And I, I often describe it as kind of all the things you wanted from a learning model that were never really fitted together well. Kind of continuous, seamless process system approach. So, yeah. <laughs>